Hi guys, hope everyone's doing well and welcome to Liana Technologies webinar. Our topic is how to compose a killer newsletter. Liana Technologies is a software company that is specialized in cloud-based digital marketing tools. And one of these tools is Liana Mailer, which is an email marketing platform. Our motto as a company is Liana loves marketers. And what we mean by that is we want you as a marketer to succeed in your marketing. In this case, email marketing. So this webinar is aimed to give you the basic tips on how to do excellent email marketing. My name is Fanny Mäki and I work as a marketing coordinator at Liana Technologies. There's my email address, so if you have any questions, any comments, you can send me an email. I would love to hear what you think and I will answer your questions if you have any. But let's get started. So why should you still be psyched to do email marketing? Look at the first bullet point there. So the return on investment of email marketing is well over 4,000%. And email is still the number one channel in digital marketing. So you want to be doing this. The catch is to do it well. So like I said, in this webinar, we'll go over the basics of how to compose an appealing newsletter. And I will naturally show you some examples of great newsletters along the way. The very first thing and the thought that should carry you throughout this whole process of composing newsletters is this question. Who am I writing to? What is my target audience? Do I have a distinct goal that I want to express and how do I express it? How do I make my message coherent and interesting and approachable? This all starts with the audience. Now this webinar is actually divided into four key areas that together make up a newsletter that is brilliant and bound to bring your investments some return. And these key areas are subject line and pre-header, content, look and design, and finally your CTA, your call to action. Subject line is the first thing your reader sees. So it should be appealing enough to make this person want to open the newsletter to begin with. Um, however, don't make it clickbait. The title should definitely reflect the content of the newsletter. Otherwise, you'll just end up disappointing your readers. Um, keep your title short and to a point. 50 characters is actually maximum on desktop, desktop and 35 on mobile, but you know more than half of people read their email, emails on mobile nowadays, so you really don't want to say anything important after 35 characters. You can spice the subject line up with an emoticon, but be careful, careful not to overuse them. You can see in our example, um, at the top there's the subject line and in the beginning there's a little cogwheel and then how to get started with marketing automation. But the little cogwheel nice, nicely reflects the content. There are cogwheels on the pictures of the newsletter so it's nicely tied, tied to, the, to the content of the newsletter. But use them sparingly. You don't want to put an, an emoticon in every newsletter. Steer clear of words like free, prize, win. This is to avoid being flagged as spam. So don't use those words in your subject line. Personalization. So personalizing your title by talking to the person with their name is actually a great way to ramp up your open rates. This is possible in most mailing tools. Um, so you can add the person's first name, for example. In Liana Mailer, this happens by using dollar signs, but you need to consult your email marketing tool provider on how this happens, but it should be possible, this personalization uh, tool. Otherwise, just with your subject line, be creative, be courageous, play around a little. Pre-header. 
this is actually a little part of text that shows in your inbox under or next to your title. So the pre-header gives some more info about the newsletter, so write something a bit more descriptive here. Come up with something else than, than the title again, uh, something a bit more descriptive about the content of your newsletter. The length should be 85 characters maximum, and remember the same rules as for the subject line. Don't make any promises that you can't deliver. Let's look at our example. So on the right side, we have an example from Apple Mail, and there's Liana Technologies newsletters. You can see the little cogwheel and the subject line, how to get started with marketing automation. And under that, there's your pre-header. So it starts getting started with marketing automation can be a long, distressing, and expensive project or not, rah, rah, rah. So that is your pre-header something descriptive that reflects your content. At the bottom of the slide, you can see examples from Gmail, and there's a different subject line. So how to become a data-driven marketer plus free white paper. And then you can see an example of what happens when the pre-header field has been left empty. So there's Liana Technologies and then our website address. To read this message in browser, click here, blah, blah, blah. So this is what happens when the pre-header field has been left empty. It just fills the text from the beginning of your newsletter. You don't want this to happen. So you wanna fill out the pre-header field with um, something that reflects your content. A-B testing is something that you want to do. So test your subject lines. A-B testing um, is to see what title works best. So utilize this possibility. Um, so how it happens, you have two subjects li sub subject lines that will be first sent to 10% of your list. So you have A subject line and then B subject line. 5% will be sent with the A subject line and 5% with the B sub subject line. Uh, and then the newsletter software will determine the one that gets higher open rates and send the rest of the newsletter with the better subject. You have to remember a few things about A-B testing though. Your list has got to be big enough. So you gotta have at least 1000 addresses on the list to get reliable results from A-B testing and give it some time. So at least an hour, maybe two, preferably a whole day for testing to really determine which is the better subject line. And in our example, you can see how this is done in Liana Mailer. So you have the subject line, again, the cogwheel and your subject line A, how to get started with marketing automation. On the right hand side of that subject line, there's a little plus sign. And by pressing that, you can add titles or subject lines. So there's your subject line B, step-by-step -step guide to marketing automation. So the other one will be sent to 5%, the other one will be sent to 5% of your list, and then the newsletter software determines which one gets higher open rates and 90% of your list gets the better title. Then there's the A-B testing waiting period. Here it's set for one hour, but like I said, you might even want to take the whole day for testing. Content is um, obviously a very important thing in your newsletter. So you want it to be relevant and targeted. You want to have one key subject in your newsletter and one goal that you're, you want your newsletter to achieve. And um, relevant and targeted content is actually very important to keep your readers satisfied and to make them want to stay on, in, on your list in the future as well. Um, so you want um, your email to be really coherent and form this logical entity because if it has too many themes, it can really 
become confusing. Think about your tone. So this means the words that you use, the way you deliver your message. Do you use formal language or informal language? This might take some time, so, so give it some time. It might also come really organically from your brand image, from the overall communications of your company, but figure out your tone and just run with it. Try to give your readers content that truly helps and inspires them. So this might be tips for email marketing, tips on how to cook delicious seasonal food, or guidelines on how to keep duvets fresh and clean. But remember to keep your content relevant to the reader. Um, so let's take an example. Um, if you've gathered your list from a health and exercise event and your list therefore consists of health nuts. These health nuts don't want to know about car parts. So this is just an example, but keep your content relevant to the reader. So in our example, um, this is pizza lovers. Um, the content is um, very short and sweet and uh, it's about pizza and um, this is relevant for the readers of this particular newsletter. But like I said, short and sweet, don't make your newsletter too long. I know you have a lot of great content, but people nowadays don't have time to read excessively long emails. So a good idea is to give some insight into a topic in your newsletter and then direct the reader to your website or blog to read more. So give some insight and then direct the reader to, to know more about the subject. And this can happen on your website or on your blog, wherever you want to direct the reader, but um, do that. So the most important message of your newsletter should be at the top. Like I said, many people nowadays don't have time to scroll through the whole newsletter, so you want to keep your content, your most important content at the top. And I actually have something to back this up. Assistant Professor Ashish Kumar from Aalto University and Marketing Professor Yari Salo from Aalto Business School, they studied link placement in their um, research which is called Effects of Link Placements in Email Newsletters on Their Click-Through Rate. So this study was published in the Journal of Marketing Communications in the spring 2016. And this study clearly showed that the hottest corner for placing the most important topic or call to action is top left corner. So now you have some research to back this up. Top left corner is the hottest corner for your most important message. But next we actually go into the creative part of the program. So feelings, entertainment, surprise, interaction, humor. You know from your own experience that evoking feelings is one of the best ways to captivate a reader. You know you read something that you um, feel something towards and, and you're instantly hooked. Also surprising your readers every once in a while is a great idea, but remember not to give any false promises. Um, you might want to offer help in issues the customer, your customer might encounter, but just make sure that you deliver entertaining content and play around with different media as well. So images, videos, infographics, stats, Videos especially is a great way to battle with the incredibly short attention span people nowadays have. And I'm not kidding, it's shorter than that of a goldfish, so videos really help with that. People do have the attention span to watch videos. People love videos. Um, you can also use GIF animations but bear in mind that they might also annoy, pe annoy people, so don't overdo it. And don't be afraid to use humor. 
you want to stand out from the crowd. So in our example, you can see um, there's wine is like dad, it fixes everything, there's humor, and um, in, it's endearing. This um, has been a Father's Day special from Royal Orchid Wine. But yeah, don't, don't be afraid to use humor. And also invite people to an interactive relationship. You can use surveys or polls, or you can even divide some theme into several emails. So you have part one in this email, and then part two is coming next week. So people anticipate your, your next newsletter. So get creative and offer your readers targeted and well thought out content. Look and design is our next topic and um, you want to have a clear and clean look with your brand colors. So have a really critical look at your newsletter. Does it represent you? Are you recognizable from the colors? The logo, is it visible? Uh, the style, is it yours? So if we look at our example, you can see the, the Elisa newsletter there. There's the blue that um, continues from, from the logo to the CTAs. So it's really this branded, clear Elisa look. Scannability is something that relates to both content and design. So cover a theme per section. You can use bullets or numbers, but just make a clear distinction between different sections and highlight key points um, visually. Also use enough variation when you place um, something like uh, newsletter blocks so it's not monotonous to the reader. So swap between bigger images, smaller images, two blocks next to each other, and also vary it between text and images. Um, but just remember, don't use images that contain parts or even worse, all of your text, because these are just destined to get caught in spam filters. So have text as text and then images as images. And talking about images, use high quality ones and preferably your own. As we see from our example, there's a really beautiful nature image um, that definitely has been shot by, by the people of Ruka. Um, but, you know, we've all seen so many stock images. So there can be a guy with a dog or a woman who's eating a salad and she's smiling. Why are the women eating salad always smiling? And there's a generic picture of balloons or whatever it is. It's not real and it's not represent, representing your company. But if you do use stock photos, use something that really speaks about the content. So uh, preferably your own photos, but if you use stock photos, reflect the content really truly. And use the right sizes for pictures because ugly, smudgy pixelation, that is a huge no-no. Always create links, links to your pictures because people love to click everything. Sometimes they just click something accidentally. So you want your, your um, pictures to direct them to the to where you want readers to go. So um, make use of this people's clicking habit and tie the CTA and the pictures together. So have links in all your images. The technical side must work. So make sure that everything works. Your um, email tool provider can test your templates, so make sure they do that. And make sure that your newsletters are responsive because, as I said earlier, about a half of emails are read on mobile devices, so you really have to cater to all these people. So make sure your newsletter provider tests the templates for their responsiveness. Call to action, so CTA. 
So you have this newsletter and you have that one theme in your newsletter and you have that one clear goal, what do you want people to do? So maybe you want your readers to attend an event or contact you or sign up for a webinar or purchase something. In all of these cases, you need a CTA, a call to action, something that you want people to do. So make your CTA clear and precise and to the point and think about your wording. So short and precise um, is better than long and complicated. Um, so about CTAs, read more, that is a classic, but maybe think outside the box and use something more elaborative when you want the reader to continue to recite. So in our example, we have learn more, uh, plan a visit, contact us. So these are all um, CTAs that basically have the same message, contact us um, to plan your visit. Um, other CTAs can be shop now, subscribe to the survey, but all these, they clearly invite people to act on it. And so there's Bob, big orange button. That's the, the next bullet point there. And CTAs, they truly can be Bobs, which means that there's a big orange button that says buy, for example. But Bob can also be red or green, and it doesn't really even have to be a button. But it needs to be clearly asking uh, the reader to do something. And depending on your target group, something flashy like animation might work, but not for everyone. So in our experience, Finnish audience doesn't um, really like those bouncing call to action buttons. But then again, in our experience, if you do business in Hong Kong, those work really well. So bouncing flashy CTAs. Um, your CTA doesn't have to be at the end of your newsletter. You can put it in the middle. Think about putting your CTA at the beginning because as the study I was quoting earlier says, links that are in the top left corner of the newsletter, they're clicked more often than the ones that are in other places. That's actually all folks. So to summarize, have one clear theme and one clear goal in your newsletter. Have entertaining content that helps, surprises, invo evokes feelings, invites people to interact with you. Have a clear visual outlook that represents you in both design and Think about your tone of voice as well. And also that everything works technically and visually. Those are important things to have in your newsletter. And most importantly, have a call to action that will make the reader click it and make you achieve the goal you have set out for your newsletter. Thank you very much, guys. Hope you've gotten some useful tips from this webinar. Check out all our solutions from our website. The address is there, so lianatech.com. You can also approach us with an email, so hello at lianatech.com. Uh, and we can talk more about how we can help you with your marketing. Or you can visit one or all of our social media accounts. They're all listed there. And thank you very much, guys, and have a great day. Thanks.